I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper here, but you guys are doing fantastic today. You got a great game, one of my best games on the Marceau, and this video is here on the map Atlantic, and it's titled, What Can We Learn From This? Because it's a really good one, and I hope you enjoy the replay. Before we begin, like, subscribe, the button below. Appreciate all the support of building community, making a great place to learn, share tactics, build uh, great relationships, and have fun doing it at the same time. So let's get right to it. Marceau, one of my favorite DD gunboats in the game. It's probably the best, at, uh, if you check out the stats, Number one in stats for DPM and high reload rate and a high uh, damage output. Pretty incredible here. And also, you want to see that uh, we're talking about, and I just released a video about it, um, which is better, RPF or gun reload. And uh, we're trying it out. I'm trying to play a lot of these gunboat DDs with the um, RPF uh, and seeing if it actually improves my game and does a little bit better because... Man, it is really interesting to have that situational awareness, to have that first look, first kill, to have the guns pointed in the right direction, to also know where the enemy destroyers are at, um, because typically they're the ones that are normally out in front, and the radio location, if you don't know already, it, it's that well, white arc above my crosshairs right there to show you what is the closest enemy ship. Now, here's the problem that I found with submarines. Um, they, If a submarine dives down, the RPF doesn't work, which is ironic, because I bet back in the day, World War II, they used this to find submarines, but I digress. I hate subs. Let's get to it right off the bat. What is the tactic? Driving straight at the, the uh, whatever destroyer is in front of me, I believe, is here. That's what the arc is pointing at. And let's see if we can reveal. And it's very difficult to have a rushing Marceau. How do you defend against it? Because it's coming in so fast, it's difficult to run away and turn away. So, okay, this point right here, what do we do? In this situation, I'm spotted from the moon. I'm also detected by the submarine. He's pinged me. He's got torpedoes out. All you can do right here is just duck and run, turn and egress the area, and just reanalyze re and reassess the situation to figure out what can we need to get um, a better angle on this. Now, we kind of just revealed their position. We ran away. We, we exposed the enemy. I've got this uh, torpedo homing on me. I hate that so much. Now we use our damage con to, to knock off the homing right there. We do a little bit of turn and burn, a little bit of shake and bake, and then we're out of the game again, or out of the cap, that is. And we're going to reassess and figure out where we're going, what we're going to do right here and to eliminate the threat, which is currently um, the destroyer, the submarine, and the Wisconsin. Oh, my gosh. And we have a cruiser in the back, I believe. Meanwhile, I don't know what my friendlies are doing. Kind of just sitting in the back, uh, just you know, messing around with something. But anyways, at least we have a location of where the, la the closest enemy unit is. Right there, there's a submarine. He ducks, duck back, ducks down underwater again. And I think if he dives deep enough, you're going to see the RPF switch. And that's another good lesson to learn about that, that submarines, when they dive, and I just found this out the hard way, that RPF just switches over to the next closest targets. Apparently, radio location doesn't work for underwater targets. Anyways, I digress. Here's the Wisconsin that I did um, kind of a semi-review on. I don't have the ship, but I will be getting it for the dockyard. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. I can recommend any dockyard ship to get out to get, because why not? You can grind for it and get it. Um, I believe people say you can almost get it for free if you really um, work hard enough at it, but... I digress. That's another story. Anyways, the reason why I kind of didn't appreciate what they did to the Wisconsin, because it's one of the best battleships in reality. Of Wisconsin, the Iowa, the Missouri, and the Jersey. Those are the battleships of the Iowa class that uh, I, I just love them. Those are the, one of the best. And don't get me wrong. Those are, I'm a, a, a history buff, and I love you know naval warfare and the, the ships and i have the missouri have the iowa and i can't wait to get the wisconsin as well but i just wish they would do more to it because what's the gimmick you're seeing all i'm going to do is burn them down yeah he's got the f key that gives you the um increased reload rate increase uh cool down or sorry reduce cool down for his his heels but i'm just going to sit here with my one of the fastest dd gunboats in the game and just burn him down i mean i don't know what else he can do other than drive to his death and all he can do is angle and just sit there, and all he has is six front turret guns that are just aiming. And yeah, they got better uh, Sigma, and they have better dispersion, battle cruiser dispersion, that is. So they're very accurate, but what good is accuracy if your ship burning down, right? So like, and I wish they would have done something a little bit more gimmicky, more a little bit more better than for the Wisconsin to survive. And boom, splash, of course, splash one, first blood, first kill of the game, and that is us. 52,000 damage right off the bat. In the first four and a half minutes so i digress i hey i, I love the wisconsin love the iowas and love missouri and the and the uh, iowa class ships and i just uh, wish they would do make them a little bit more stronger that, that's all i was getting at for those but anyways they're still great i'm gonna get it i recommend you guys get it it's worth the grind for the dockyard so what are we doing right here we're turning back around we've got the rpf locator uh pinging in i would say the southeastern regions of alpha so what are we going to do here so what's our game plan notice that all my team is in the back running away so it's just me and my my submarine playing 
uh, against uh, a cruiser, Buffalo, another destroyer potentially, and a, a submarine. So I think we have the numbers in this game. We may be able to fight this off. We held off a battleship, and we're going to go ahead and try to find uh, another victim right here. So we're going to drive straight again at the RPF location. Why? Because we got the speed to do it. We're going to rush down whatever's here. I believe it could be a uh, submarine or even a, a uh, destroyer. Now, the cool thing about that is if we get uh, rush them unsuspectingly, they just have little reaction time to slow down a Marceau. And the next thing is if we get within 2.9 kilometers or less for a submarine, his torpedoes only do 10% damage. So... I think we do have the upper hand here. I think Marceau is great at bullying DDs again in the in the very end of the map. Now here comes those submarine torpedoes right here. We're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of shake and bake, and you know Marceau, not bad. It can maneuver a little well, and they avoid those. Again, these are sub torpedoes, so they're not the greatest. Um, I'm not sure what's in front of me. I don't know if it's just it might be a destroyer because he or it could be a sub too. They both spot me from the moon, so why not take out this buffalo? He's really hampering my um, strategy here. We want to get out the radar cruiser as fast as we can. Okay, notice that that RPF indicator changed directions immediately, which means either one, they ran away further than the Buffalo. That's beyond 8.7 kilometers right now, which I doubt it. Or the uh, submarine or, uh, went underwater. So I think it's the submarine that went underwater because otherwise yeah, he's right there. And you can see how that RPF switches directions uh, because that, that I found out that the hard way. That's how RPF works, and I think that's stupid. I don't think it should work that way. Um, but he was still within range and spotting me, and the Buffalo wasn't spotting me. So I know that that submarine was the one that's closest. So you can learn a lot from RPF just based upon the distance and positioning of ships. We're going to go ahead and burn down this Buffalo and get him out of the game. Now, our DPM is just really melting away. It's very, very effective, and he's having a trouble trouble or a tough time aiming and hitting us boom splash two there goes our second kill he's having a trouble uh aiming the buffalo for, uh, shooting a marceau that's going about 45 to 55 knots and increasing distance at the same time it's very very difficult to hit a marceau or Claber. so uh, yeah that's that's one downside but you got to know your weaknesses and you got to know your strengths so right now we got the palmer coming in right at us so why not burn him down because guess what we are a good fire starting he spamming destroyer and that's what you like i like about Marceau a lot. I'm not too worried about the destroyer or um, the submarine because they're probably running or running away right now. RPF is not pinging any kind of direction to my left or right, just straight ahead at the Palmer. So I'm assuming it's it's locating the Palmer right now. So why not just take advantage? Now secondaries are also difficult for hitting uh, fast Claber Marceau kind of ships because we're so fast and you can stop start uh, a lot with these engine boosts active because the secondaries are typically aiming at the center of your ship and leading it because they're all automated. So you can throw the computer off a lot. And there's Splash 3 right there. You can throw the computer a lot by just a couple jukes here and there. Left, right, left turns, left, right, and kind of like that shake and bake of turning. And that really does help throw off a lot of the shots, including human players as well. So we learned a couple things right there. So what are we going to do here with RPF? We're going to use this to figure out what's the last load no known location of the um, that enemy destroyer or enemy submarine. And I think it's the submarine. Yep, there he is. He spots right there. So RPF is pinging in the correct direction. So he was on the surface right now. As soon as he dives, you're going to notice that the arc is probably going to switch directions and it's probably going to ping the next nearest guy so actually it's a downside for the enemy because the submarine then reveals uh where his other friendly uh, player is at so that's good for me bad for them because once he dives watch the rpf indicator switch and now i get a quick location of where the other destroyer is at so let's see here let's see if he does it i do recall him doing it so we're spotted so that was probably the submarine surfacing he spot there it is switched right there that means he went underwater that tells me that there's a submarine way out in the distance over there. Hmm, I wonder what that one is. So probably the Shimakaze because he was the one that was in our area. He's probably just out there dicking around. So let's see. Ooh, we got the Delarna right there. So we could eliminate the Delarna right here, right now, if we get uh, a good lead. And these guns are not the most accurate, but they do have decent arcs. And if you just know how to arc them just right, you could probably get this Splash 4. There it is. Splash 4 kills for us. And here's the submarine right now. Notice that his direction indicator is the, the shadow moving in that direction. That means he's running away from us right now. We're within 2.9 kilometers or less, which tells me his torpedoes can only do 10% damage. There's a thing you need to learn right there. And we have engine boost time. We're trying to chase him down, which is terrible because I can't believe a submarine underwater is out beating a 45-knot destroyer. Ridiculous, right? 
Uh, Benham is going to be taking some shots from us. He's set on fire. He's going inside the smoke right there. And we go undetected because now nobody's spotting for him. There is the submarine right there. We are eventually going to catch up to him. And we're going to hit that little G key to drop the depth charges and hopefully put him out of his misery. There's nothing better than sinking a submarine. I'll tell you what, it's the greatest feeling in the world. And we got the RPF locator pinging. Let's see if he's going to ping. I think the destroyer is going to come out of the other end. Yep, it's a switch. I think he's going to come out of the other end of that smoke. Hold on. Yep, he's right there. So we got the daring in front of us, and we're dropping depth charges on the submarine as much as we can. Let's see if we can get this daring out first. And boom, boom. Look at that double kill. Splash two, or four, and five with the Kraken. And I have never done that before. Double kill? Wow, on a sub and a destroyer at the same time right there with getting the Kraken. That's a first for me. So that was awesome. Man, my blood is rushing. It was pumping at the time, but very, very satisfying in the end. 98,000 damage in the last nine minutes of the game. And we got the RPF location. Now, this is why RPF is so great. It tells you where this last person is when literally there's only one or two people left in the map, especially Destroyer. It can be annoying because it wastes so much time looking for this guy, but at least RPF is active, so we know where he's going to be at. We're just going to do is drive straight at him full throttle. And we're going to take in as many planes as we can down with us. So, RPF, how has it been for games for me lately? Again, um, I, I've said that, you know, it uh, is RPF better than having gun reload? Again, my answer has always been it depends. It depends on what you're trying to do. For ranked, maybe it'd be, I mean, sorry, for randoms like this, maybe it's okay uh, if you want that situation awareness or if you like shooting, uh, you know, uh, having a better reload and shooting a lot more DPM out there. That's also a good thing. I have seen a lot of people play this in ranked and competitive and clan battles, and they've had different experiences with it. They say they like to have that situation awareness of where things are at. Um, some people would prefer having gun reload or maybe torp reload. So it just depends on what you're trying to do and what your play style is. Do I like it? Absolutely. I do like it. Um, I think it's situational for what you're trying to do, uh, especially for me as a, a DD gunboat guy and trying to hunt destroyers. It is a very crucial component to have. Um, I do enjoy it. I do like it, and it helps me out and saves a lot of time. See, I kind of know where he's at right now. I'm just driving straight at him, and we're going to see if we can use our DPM gun reload just to take out the good old Shimikaze. I know torpedoes are coming, but we're going to eliminate him anyways. And boom, splash seven. That is seven kills, 104,000 damage in the se seven minutes remaining, and uh, that is the, how we play that. That was the best game I've had in the Marceau. And really, really awesome right there. But um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what your thoughts in the comments below. Do you like RPF? Do you not like it? What would you rather have? Gun reload, torp reload, whatever that may be. Those four points. What do you usually spend them on? Would that be a good spend for RPF? Or would you rather have, like, like I said, um, uh, faster firing guns? But I digress. As always, thank you guys for supporting the channel, building a better community, and helping us learn something at the same time. And as always, if you see me out there, make sure you say hi. And uh, it's good playing with you guys. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.